Mark is the second gospel. Matthew, Mark. And as we read through the gospels, you get some different perspectives of what God has led these men that wrote about Jesus Christ to put down. And uh, all Scripture is God-breathed. And so we know this is the Word of God. And we know that we need to put it into our lives and the way we live and the way we act. As we listen to that song, I was born to be royal, I was made to be free, but I was torn from the garden. You know, each and every one of us was created by the Master. And His goal for us is eternal fellowship with Him. That's what He wants. He wants eternal fellowship with each and every one of you. But also each and every one who is outside those doors. Unfortunately, many don't want to. As we read Mark chapter 9, and we're going to start at verse uh, 36 and read on down. It says, Taking a child, he set him before them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one child like this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me does not receive me, but him who sent me. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not hinder him. For there is no one who will perform a miracle in my name and be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is for us. For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because of your name as followers of Christ, truly I say to you, he will not lose his reward. Whoever calls us one of these little ones who believe to stumble, it would be better for him if, with a heavy millstone hung around his neck, he had been cast into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than having your two hands to go into hell into the unquenchable fire, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than having your two feet be cast into hell, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. If your eye causes you to stumble, throw it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than in having two eyes to be cast into hell, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if the salt becomes unsalty, with what will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Kind of a rough scripture. It's a scripture that really <coughs> makes us stop and think, what is Jesus Christ talking about here? And as we look at it, and we look at the love of Jesus that He has, He is talking here about how horrible hell is. He is making a comparison about going into eternal life compared to going into eternal hell. There are only two options the Bible points out. Heaven or hell. 
Everybody will end up one place or the other. There isn't a third option. There's no fence between them that you can ride. You either accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you spend eternity in hell. And he makes it clear that it's unquenchable fire. Have you ever been around fire that burns? There is nothing more consuming that I have seen than a fire. It takes everything and it can just burn up. I threw a couple boxes on a few coals just yesterday and within seconds they were gone and they burned. And fire is something you can't handle. You can't stick your hand into fire and keep it there without suffering greatly. But yet that is what everybody who doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is doomed to face. And we were all doomed to face the same thing. That was the only option there was if Jesus Christ had not come forward. He makes it clear, Mark does in his writing, it would be better to cut your hand off. But now we all know that that doesn't stop the sin. Because the sin comes from our heart. But he's making the comparison that it would be better to cut your foot off if it's causing you to stumble in your walk with the Lord than to spend eternity in hell. It would be better to pluck out your eye if your eye is causing you to sin. That's how bad sin is. Too often we look at sin and our attitude is lighthearted almost. Well, I can't help it. I am just human. I'm going to sin anyway. So what's it really matter? I'm saved. We have that attitude of you know, God's forgiven me and I just can't stop doing this, so He understands. This section of the Bible makes it pretty clear that the consequences of sin are terrible. And they cannot be in the presence of God. You know, when Corey was singing and he was talking about the fact that there was dirt, we are dirty. We were made from dirt. From the soil you have come and to the soil you will return. Our physical bodies are dirty. What hope do we have if the consequences of sin are this eternal fire where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched? You know, we walk through life every day, whether it be Walmart, whether it be your workplace, whether it be the grocery stores, whether it be just downtown or maybe at the school. And we walk by many people that don't know Jesus Christ's salvation. But yet, we don't consider it important enough in our hearts and in our souls to do anything about it. We are so drugged down by our own lives, by our own lives, that we don't have time to take care of 
anybody else's problems. You know, sometimes you go into a store and you ask somebody, how's it going today? And the, then they start to tell you and the first thing that enters in your mind is, oh, I didn't need this. I've got to hurry up and get to the back of the store and get whatever I need. And that's the way we sometimes do with the way we treat people. As we treat our brothers and sisters who are struggling in Christ, we don't want to take the time to share with them or help them because we are just too busy in our own worlds. And those that don't know the Lord that are going to face this unquenchable fire, we don't stop to reach out and share with them the only plan of salvation. We're coming up on Easter time. And it's, it's kind of sad that sometimes Easter time is the only time that people even reflect on the cross and reflect on salvation and reflect on that forgiveness that came at the cross. The only thing that is keeping you from this unquenchable fire is that cross that Jesus Christ died upon. And He rose again. It's not the cross. I shouldn't say it's the cross. It's the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross. But we don't take that to heart. We don't get inspired by Christ to make a difference in somebody else's life. We have become so carefree and lackadaisical about unimportant things in our life. You know, we, we have a glory awaiting us. Have you ever thought what the two differences are? When I read the call to worship, I read some about what heaven was like. But there's a lot more to it. In verse 20, or chapter 22, it says, Then He showed me a river of the water of life, clear as crystal coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb in the middle of its street. On either side of the river was a tree of life, bearing twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of their tree were the healing of the nations. There will no longer be any curse, and the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it. And His bond servants will serve Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. And there will no longer be any night, and they will not need be of need of the light of the Lamb, nor the light of the sun, because the Lord God will illumine them, and they will reign forever and ever. It is going to be for the believers a blessed eternity because of forgiveness. When that song says back to the garden, we will be going back to a place where there is no sin. And just stop and think. What would it really be like? A lot of people, you know, like they have their own interpretations of what they think heaven will be. You know, and uh, Dan, it's not where the Royals or no, Raiders win the Super Bowl every right year. That's not heaven. <laughs> but we do. We come up with our ideas of what heaven is. But there is no sin in heaven. Can you imagine really being someplace where there's no sickness? There's no evil? 
You wouldn't even need the newspaper because there'd be no bad news ever. Good news is all they would be able to print. We know they never print good news, so. <laughs> but no sin there at all. These old glasses, we can get rid of these glasses permanently. Don't have to worry about being bald, I hope. But we have such a great thing to look forward to because we know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Because of Jesus Christ, we can look forward to eternity with Him. And it says our assurance of salvation. It doesn't say it's some dreamed off hope that maybe it could happen. The assurance of spending eternity with Him. He has said we will spend eternity with Him. But what was that other option? That other option was eternity in hell. The fire does not stop. The worm does not die. It's not like you just cease to exist and you will be no more. No. That's not what the Bible says. It says their worm does not die. And the fire is not quenched. And that's the two options. And what is standing between those two options? The forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Everything that we have ever done wrong. You don't have a sin on you that Jesus Christ did not take to that cross. There is not a sin you committed that He did not take to the cross of Calvary. And He is offered it free of charge. Free of charge. It's all His work. It's not about how good a person you've been, what you have done in your life, what you've made possible in your life. You might have raised the greatest kids in the world. You might have done everything right. Except if you're a parent, I know you lost at least one, so you're sinners. We are all sinners, saved by grace. This morning, if you do not know that you have the assurance of salvation, it is offered at the cross of Christ. He died for your sins. And I'm going to invite you to come on down this morning and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But for those of you who have already accepted Jesus Christ, take that assurance of salvation, that forgiveness, and start living with it. Take that assurance of salvation that you have and start sharing it with others because if they don't know about the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, They will spend eternity in an unquenchable fire. It doesn't matter how nice a person they are. It doesn't matter how good a person is. It doesn't matter how many good deeds they've done. You can feed all the poor people in the world, but if you don't know Jesus, you will spend eternity in an unquenchable fire. You can reach out to anybody and do all sorts of good deeds. But if you don't know Jesus, you spend eternity in unquenchable fire. It might be a good person that you're married to. But if they don't know Jesus, they spend eternity in unquenchable fire. It might be a child. It's now no longer what the world calls a child. But if they don't know Jesus, and sometimes we say, well, they've heard it all, it's up to them. Have they heard it enough? It doesn't matter if your child is still 70 years old, they're your child. You can still share with them. And sometimes we stop. Or we don't want to infringe on their rights. 
or we don't want to bother them with it. They've heard it before, they'll turn us off when they hear it again. I'd rather they turn me off 20 times and have them listen to 21st than have only shared 18 times with them and then given up. And that's hard sometimes. The Word of God is hard sometimes. But we're not here for what we get in this world. This world has nothing to offer us comparable at all to the glories of paradise and spend an eternity with Jesus Christ in paradise. Look at the difference. Read the difference in the Word of God. Everybody bow your heads for a minute. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, every one of us here deserves eternal hell. Every one of us here deserves to be in that unquestionable fire for all eternity. But Lord, you have offered everybody here your free gift of salvation. All we have to do is accept it. You've already done it. Lord, I ask you to move the hearts of everybody today. Those that don't know you, draw them toward you. Your Holy Spirit would work on them the need they have to come to you. And for those that do know you as Lord and Savior, that they would be driven by your Holy Spirit to share that free gift of salvation that you gave at the cross in your resurrection, Lord. That we can spend eternity with you where there is no sin at all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. In the Bible, Jesus called people publicly to come profess their faith in Him. We do that here. And if anybody wants to come forward during this last song and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you just want to learn more about it. You're still not sure about what's going on. I invite you to come on down. If you want to join this church, come on down. If you want to follow Believer's Baptism, come on down. If you